Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to put together this video to give you a little video demonstration of setting up your plant breeding lab, right? So the first step is that we are going to set up our light box in which we're going to grow our plants. And then the next step will actually uh, set up the grow system and we'll sow our seeds. So to start, we need to set up the uh, light box. So the bulk of it is going to be made from these crates, right? Hopefully you all got your crates already. Uh, so you're going to need two of them. Simple file crates like this. You want a solid bottom or at least a solid piece on them. So you need two crates. We're also going to be using uh, aluminum foil. You're going to need some sort of cutting implement that's going to let you cut the sides of your crates. Uh, just garden shears should work. You can use a hacksaw. Any sort of, uh, I, don't, I don't think regular scissors, scissors will work, but any sort of cutting implement that will let you cut through this plastic, you're going to need. Um, you will also need either a drill or you can just use a knife to uh, make a hole in the bottom of one of these. And then you'll need your light bulb and extension for your light bulb. Don't need that. And you're going to need some tape. So double-sided tape is easiest when to uh, attach the aluminum foil. But if you don't have double-sided tape, you can make it work either by, you know, making little loops with the tape and um, attaching it that way. You can kind of get creative um, with what you can do. So... Uh, we're going to put this together now, and I'm going to show you how it all goes. So the first step is you want to um, get your crates in order, right? So the idea behind this, and hopefully you can all see this, is that you're going to have one crate that's going to serve on the bottom. And for that one, obviously, you want the solid bottom on the bottom, right? And then the other crate is going to sit on top. And our plants are going to grow inside of here. So we need to create an opening, and that's what we're going to be using our shears for, to cut out an opening that's going to allow us to access the inside of our crate. The next step is that we are going to line these crates in aluminum foil, and we're going to zip tie them together. That's the last thing that I didn't include. You need zip ties. So I have zip ties up here. Let me make sure. Somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bingo. All right, you need zip ties. Although, if you don't have zip ties, I'm sure you can make it work um, with uh, any sort of thing that will allow you to fix these together. So I'm sure you can just tie them together if need be, uh, tape them together, anything to uh, affix those two crates to each other. So again, we're making, we're cutting out our area here. We're going to line this whole thing on the inside with aluminum foil. We're going to attach these two to each other. We're going to make a hole on the top from which we can hang down our light. And that's about it. It's very simple. So we're going to start by cutting out our openings. Uh, you can measure this out, uh, or you can kind of freehand it. I am going to freehand it because the whole thing is getting lined in aluminum foil. Anyway, so you just need a big enough opening that's going to let you be able to access your plants pretty uh, easily. All right, so I'm going to start here. Here's our shears. Hopefully they can get through that. Yes, they can. All right, so you make a couple cuts. Sorry, Manny. Don't be disturbed. Okay, so shears work really well, um, but that's basically all you're doing, right? You're making an opening that is going to allow us to be able to access the interior of our light box here. 
uh, so we can check on and uh, check on our plants when they're growing, right? So there's one. We got one down. We're going to go do the other one. And you want to try and make it even, right? So I know where I cut on that first one. I'm going to try and kind of make the same dimensions here for what is going to be the top. Right? That is kind of tough. Manny, just relax, boys. Don't worry. Okay. La, 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 la. Okay. Okay. Step one is done. Right? So now we got our opening like so. So that's going to be our light box. Uh, step two, we're going to line these, each of these with aluminum foil. All right. So for that, we'll need our foil and we're going to need our tape. And what we're going to do is we'll line um, all of the sides except for our open side here. To At the weight end, we're going to make uh, essentially... Um, not a door, uh, some sort of drapes, maybe? That's probably not the right word. Uh, we're gonna make a little something that will cover this front part that I can't think of what the word is. So let's get it on that now. Foil is being a pain. Get back in there. There we go. So you don't have to be uh, super exact with measuring, right? This is as long as foil is going to cover this entire thing, we'll be okay. So why the double-sided tape is easiest is, yeah, that is, there's a pain in, how does this tape work? Let's get rid of that. Oh, maybe that's okay. Oops, All right. Oh, jeez. There we go. Get rid of that. Don't need that. Okay, so we've got our foil that we're going to line this thing in. So you can set it in there, take it out, get your double-sided tape. Line the foil with it. And again, that's why the double-sided is easiest, because it'll stick to the foil and it's going to stick to the crepe. But if you don't have that double-sided, you can kind of make regular tape work. Make like uh, like the little loops like that with it, and that should work. Or kind of figure things out as you go. You guys can get creative with it. I trust you all. The big key is that it just gets lined with foil. All right, let's see where we go. We got our, got our tape. Press it down in there. And our bottom is lined, and you're gonna do this. Like that, you're going to do that on all sides except for this front side, like I said. Although, um, yeah, except for that front side. So let's do it for all of our sides. Okay. All right, number two. Next step is we are going to... Now we are going to attach these together, right? So now you're going to sit on top of each other like so, and right? they line up pretty well there. So what we're going to do now is take our zip ties, and all you got to do is Make a slight hole in your, your uh, foil there. 
run it down. Hopefully these zip ties are long enough. Should be. So you run it down through there, and run it up the hole right there. Oh, they're going to be just, just long. Oh, man, they may not be. Ah, oh, that sucks. Well, we will improvise. Sometimes you need to improvise. And we'll use two together. And now, they're long enough. All right. Voila. Alright, so there's one, attach them together, and we'll just do four. Alright, line it up as best we can, it doesn't have to be perfect, and you can even go back in now and grab more foil if we want in certain areas. We'll come on to the other side over here. We should be a little bit so tight, but oh, oh. I'll take our second zip tie, attach it to the first. I got a big long one. And now we're attached. Right. rip a little bit of your foil on the inside when you're tying these things together. That's okay. As long as it's, uh, the majority of it is covered, you're going to be okay. Because again, we are trying to, we're putting this foil in here in the first place because we want it to be able to make a nice reflective surface. So all that light is going to reflect and bounce off all these walls and it's going to ideally hit our plants. So we're going to add couple more zip ties just to secure this thing completely. I set it on. It's a little wonky looking. Eh, sometimes that happens. As long as it's going to serve its purpose, be relatively stable, I think it will be just fine. All right, so that's three zip ties for me in there. Um, I could probably, ideally, I'd want to put another one back here, but I'm out of zip ties, so that's what it's going to be for now. Uh, it's sitting a little bit wonky. Uh, let's see on a flat surface. Eh, but it's going to do. All right, so it should look, resemble something like this. Right? That's ideally what your light box is going to want to look like. Uh, I may come in here and add just a little bit more foil because I want to patch up some of these holes or little spots. But ideally, you should be here should be looking something like that. So next step is we want to make a hole for the light. Right, so we need to. We're going to be moving our light as we grow our plants, right? So we always want the light, the light bulb, to be about 10 centimeters away from where our plants are. So when we we're first sowing our seeds, we're going to have a light fairly close to them. And as our plants grow, we're going to move that light a little bit up. And I'm trying to undo that. Bingo. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of why we have the extension cord. So we need a hole that's going to allow this to go through. So for that, I think I can get away with just using a kitchen knife. We'll see. I 
maybe not. Yeah, I don't think I'm sturdy enough. So, never mind. Let's try this one. Hopefully that's sharp enough. And then if not, we can always go to... Well, that's three. This seems a bit dangerous, huh? I uh, wonder now that it's like that, if I can use this guy. I'm carving a pumpkin. Just gotta get that first cut in there. And then hopefully I don't slice open my hand. Knife safety, everyone! Uh, generally cut away from yourself. Except if you're not, then just be careful. <laughs> Take your time, always use a sharp knife. You're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife because you're going to be uh, pressing in too hard. I think we're just about there. This you can make a much smaller handle as long as all that could fit through to get it set up like so. So there we go, bingo! Now we've got that. We can get our light bulb in there. Lay down, Bobby. So we got our light bulb. Screw that in. Okay. So, hopefully you guys are seeing that. That's how this is going to work. And we're going to be able to move this up and down as we need to. Uh, in case if I do need to move this up even further at that time, I'll widen up that hole at the top. But for now, that should be pretty good. Actually, you know, I am going to need to wipe this up because I think at some point it's going to need to come up. We will see. But, so, uh, what you can do uh, to just make this real easy is when you're first planting, right, the light bulbs, the light's going to need to be close to your plants. Hang this down and just, you can just tape this, uh, the uh, cord to the top here. It's probably the easiest way to make sure it's there. Uh, just make sure you tape it really well. In the past, when we've done this, there have been times where it hasn't been taped well enough and it just falls down. So make sure you tape that well enough. But for right now, this is what we got. And then we got one more step. We need to make a covering for this. So what we're going to do is we are going to make it on the outside. Now we're gonna make it on the inside because that's really what we want to do, right? Inside's better. Inside's better. Yeah, we're gonna make it on the inside. So we'll need a couple sheets, right? The length of our thing there is gonna be one. So we take our sheets, we're going to tape them together. So let's get a little tape. All right, there we go. So if you guys can see, hopefully you can see down here. Sorry, I'm doing this on my computer and it doesn't show me the camera, so I'm just guessing. 
whole video, you're just staring at my wall the entire time. Hopefully not. So, you tape your pieces together, and then this is going to, to give us a little uh, strength here, a little tip, is you can add some more just strips of tape, and that's going to give you a little rigidity to this uh, piece of foil here, because this is going to serve as our kind of opening. So you can just add a, piece, a couple pieces of tape, whatever kind of tape you got. You got duct tape, go for it. Add a few pieces. Although, let me think if we can just do it on the outside, because that makes it way easier. I think it'll get this to reflectiveness, right? Yeah, so we're just going to put this on the outside. I think that should work. Right. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Again... Experiment with this. You guys figure out what works as long as you're making this nice enclosed space that's going to reflect all this light. You should be pretty good. All right. So we do it like that. And the reason we added the tape here was to make this a little more rigid. It allows it to kind of sit a little bit better. And then what we can even do here is get a couple pieces of tape and add some tape here to the outsides when we want to fully enclose this when our plants are uh, in there. So I'll do that right now. All right, and we'll be able to peel this tape off as we need it to when we want to check on our plants. But for now, we can tape it, and that's going to enclose our light box pretty well. All right. So there we go. We're built. The next step is to actually uh, grow some plants in here. So let's take a look at how we're going to set up our growing system. All right, guys. So now we're going to be setting up our growing system and sowing our seeds. So what's great about this is you don't have to buy any sort of pots. You can reuse items that you probably already have. So we're gonna be growing our seeds in water bottles, use water bottles. So you can use different sizes in your, um, in the document that is posted along with this. It has some more information on, depending on what size water bottle you're gonna use, how many seeds you can plant in each. So for your standard, this is like almost 17 ounce size water bottle. You're gonna be planting four seeds in each one. And in total, you're gonna to be planting 16 seeds. All right, so here are water bottles. You're also going to need, obviously, your seeds that I'm sending to you. You will need um, fertilizer. This is Osmocote. We'll go into fertilizers at a later lecture. Uh, but this is a slow-release fertilizer. Essentially, all these little pellets are um, contain fertilizer, and they're coated in a resin. And as that resin breaks down, it releases the fertilizer over time. So that's a pretty nifty fertilizer right there. You will also need uh, some sort of mix. This is a, uh, we will learn about soils and soilless mixes. This is a soilless mix technically. Um, and we'll go into that at a later date. But essentially this is a mix of uh, peat moss and something referred to as perlite. Uh, so we'll be using that. You guys can use... Um, any other, ideally it's a soilless mix that you're gonna to wanna to use, but if you get like a potting mix, that's gonna be fine. Uh, but ideally this would work best because we are uh, gonna be fertilizing with it. Uh, you will also need uh, some twine, like so. This is gonna serve as our watering system. As you see, we're gonna be making 
uh, kind of a nifty little watering system. And besides that, you'll need some tools. So we have to cut these bottles, so regular scissors will work fine. I apparently don't have scissors, so I'll be using the shears again, as well as a knife. And if you want to get very precise, you could have a ruler. What we're going to be doing, the first step that we're going to be doing is we are going to be cutting the top part off of each bottle. And ideally, you want to cut about a centimeter below the shoulder of the bottle. So this is the shoulder right here, and you can measure out a centimeter below it. It comes out to about this line if you have a similar type bottle. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's how we're going to start, and I will get to that right now. So I'm thinking I can cut into it with a knife and then use the shears to cut around. And hopefully that works, and if it doesn't, we'll figure something out. Yeah, the shears don't really work that well. I think I can just use this knife all the way around. Let me try. And we're off to a great start, everyone. <laughs> Better. So we'll use our standard small little kitchen knife. And we're just going to cut around, just cut the top and right off of this. What's nice about the bottom is it has those grooves in it. So I'm just following a groove all the way over. Come on, baby. Bingo. Okay, first step. So just to give you a little idea of how this is going to work, this is going to essentially be your pot. Right there, we're going to fill this with our uh, potting mix. We're going to be planting in here. And then this is going to be the water reservoir. So this is going to sit on top of this. We're going to fill the water reservoir, obviously, with water. And then this cotton twine is going to serve as a wick. And it's going to lead, fr lead from the water reservoir up into your... Um, growing container up top here, and uh, that is going to act to water your seeds, right? Water's going to flow up this through capillary action, and it'll bring water up from the reservoir up into your little growing spot up here. So that's the idea. So first things first, got to cut all your bottles, so we'll do that. <laughs> Okay, all of our uh, bottles are cut. We are now going to need to uh, save your caps. If you don't have a cap, you can cover this in aluminum foil and wrap a rubber band around it. But if you have your cap, you're gonna to wanna to save that. And we're gonna be punching a hole into our cap from which we could run our twine. Hold on, I gotta get my dog because he's crying for some reason. What's the matter, buddy? Hey, hey, there's noise going on and it freaks out. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to take it off here and I'm going to poke it right into my table. So you can stab right in. Um, you don't really need a drill, you can just use a knife here if your cap is small. Kind of stab in, move the knife around, move it a little bit bigger here. You need it big enough where uh, the string or your twine can kind of go through, sit through easily, but not too big that it gets caught, right? So let's take a look. We're going to cut a piece here. And what, when you're measuring out how much uh, string you're going to cut, ideally you want this to run up to about halfway to almost three quarters up into where you're uh, growing we'll see your growing part is. And then this could run almost down to the bottom. So something around there is what we want. Doesn't seem that big. Huh? And then we gotta have this large enough that the string can run through there relatively easily. So that should be about good. Let's put this on. 
and we're going to check it. All right, so that will run up in there. This is going to run up. This is probably a little bit short. On this. Oh, no, that'll be all right. It's a bit short, but we'll make the other ones longer. So it's going to be something like that, right? And this will get filled with our potting mix. Actually, that is a little short. I'm going to make that bigger. We want this to run up to about halfway, three quarters of the way up, probably about halfway. And then this needs to extend down just a bit longer, just a bit further down into there. But that's your setup. So let's do this with all of them. Okay, all four of our guys now are complete. All right, we got our wick in each one. We've got our water reservoir. We've got our actual growing section up here. And we're about ready to go. So the next step is we are going to uh, add water to our growing reservoir, our water reservoirs. And each of these, we're going to get the wicks nice and wet. And then we're going to move along from there. So I'm just going to go to my sink and add water to all of these guys. Be right back. Okay. We got all of them, all of our water reservoirs filled. I poured a little water in the top here just to get the wick a little bit wet as well. And we are now on to our next step, putting in some soil. All right, so you open this up. Now, you want, whenever you're potting, you want your soil to be a little bit moist, right? You don't want it completely dry. So I'm gonna pour some of this into just a Tupperware and wet it a bit to make sure it's a good consistency. You want to be able to just clump it up and uh, have it so it would form a ball and hold that shape. So wet enough where it'll hold the shape, not too wet. Let's Okay, so we don't need a whole ton because you can see each of these isn't that big. So I'm gonna pour, that's probably good. I'm gonna pour some more just in case. Oh, let's see, and if we need more, we can add more. So I'm gonna add a little water to this. And again, you don't need it uh, saturated, right? You need it just wet enough that if you form a clump, it's going to hold its shape like that, right? You don't have to soak it. You don't want excess water coming out. So there we go. So what we're going to do now is we are going to add our soil. Now I'm saying soil. It's technically a soilless mix, but uh, I'm saying soil because it's easier. Right, so the first step is we're going to add, we're going to fill up our chambers up here about a quarter of the way. And we also want, as we're filling, we want to make sure that our wicks aren't on the side. Right, we kind of want the wicks straight up because that is going to help when we, um, uh, that's going to improve uh, the irrigation of our wicks, right? So it may take a little bit of work here. It's going to get a little dirty. 
and pull that whip up towards the interior. As long as it's not hugging the side, you guys will be fine. All right, so that's about a quarter of the way. Oh yeah, I probably have way too much mix in here. I should go plant something else after this. All right, so you wanna just add your potting mix around here. And there you go. Lost a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. Right, you see, if you could see, let's see if I can turn this, keeping that wick in the center there, right? We don't want it hugging the edge. Right, right in the middle, and that's going to improve. The uh, irrigation, or as the, the uh, watering of our future plants here. It is a bit messy. That is the nature of ag or horticulture. And then. Last but not least, you my friend. I'm gonna get a smaller wick. Okay. okay. So each of those is about a quarter of the way filled. Let me wash my hands real quick. About a quarter of the way filled, and now we're ready for the next step. That is to add the fertilizer. So in, you will have fertilizer in each one of these. Uh, we're going to be adding eight of these pellets. Now, if you're using a different size container, make sure you look at the reference sheet because it will be a different amount of fertilizer that you're going to add. But if you're using these as 17 ounce, just about 17 ounce, you're going to be adding eight pellets. And just do a nice little ring around your, uh, your thing here. that you've added your fertilizer. Next step is we're going to fill these guys back up, right? And since our, if your mix is really wet, fill it up to just almost to the top, right? About a quarter of an inch we want to leave. We're going to fill it mostly up to the top. But we're leaving a little gap. Because we're gonna, instead of, you know, like digging a hole or a little depression for each of our seeds, we're just gonna add some soil on top at the end. So, add that almost to the top. Almost. Almost there, right? Give it a little, little pat down as you do it. More, not the, not fully compacted, but give it a little. Right. And it should be pretty good there. And then, now we can finally plant our seeds. So as I said, for these small ones, we are only planting um, four seeds in each. And in total, you're going to be planting 16 seeds. So whatever um, 
combination size containers you use, ultimately you're going to be planting 16 seeds. I'm going to be very careful here because I do not want all these to go spilling out because these are surprisingly expensive. And we're off to a bad start. <laughs> all right. So we need a sharper. Okay. These guys are very small as well, as you're going to see. So, so be careful when you're using them. All right. So again, just like uh, kind of like with our fertilizer, we're going to plant four, spread them out uh, as you do it. So kind of. I spread them evenly across, and they're very tiny seeds, so be careful. It's easy, potentially easy to uh, to kind of lose track of some. Like I might have planted an extra one there. Do your best. As long as you get enough planted will be all right. It's made for someone with very tiny hands. Okay, that's all of them. Let's see if I can get these back in here now. Okay. Okay, we are just about there. Last step is we're going to add just a little bit of soil on top. And just to cover up the seeds that we planted, not too deep. At a centimeter, if that, half an inch. Centimeter might be too much. Just enough to cover them up. too much added there, but oh well. Okay. There we go. Bam, they're all planted. Now, if you, depending on how wet your soil was, you can add a little bit more water. I got a spray bottle that I'm probably going to give them just a little spritz extra. Just a little bit. And now we move them into the light box that we built. And that is our setup now. Let's get that up there. Uh, so you want to raise your light up so it is about 10 centimeters above the tops of where your plants are. So I just uh, pulled the string up and then taped it down when I got to the right height. Put your, your plants underneath the light. Make sure this is really secured so it doesn't fall down. And then, whoop, wrong button, and 
you turn it on. Right, and that is it. Now you are set. Check on these. Um, each day you're going to want to see how they grow. As soon as you can start seeing characteristics, you're going to start recording the characteristics. And make sure um, you're going to see this water level drop. When it gets low, fill it with water. And that's essentially it. You are now set up. You're going to take your lid. Close your lid. And you are done. And that light stays on 24 hours. All right, so that stays on the entire time that you're growing. And there you go. If you have any gaps, you want to cover up the gaps, you can, but you should be pretty good with something like that. And there we are.